Hello. Hi. We logged on early uh, just to give everybody a chance to find the feed. Log on. Hi. If you'd like to chime in with who's watching, you can say hello. How's everybody doing today? For those of you watching in the future, uh, my name is Miss Alex, and today we have Kids Art Lab, Frida Kahlo. So we're gonna learn about her. Um, hi. Hi, people joining, hello. We're gonna be learning about Frida Kahlo today, and I have two different art activities for you to do after this class. So it should be fun. I, um, I was a little inspired by Frida today. Hi! Hello! <laughs> so I have, I did my, my eyebrows um, in honor of Frida and um, also have a little decoration, a little flower crown thing on top, headband. What do you think? <laughs> so happy to see everybody today. What have you all been doing today? Anybody playing outside? Oh, it's so nice out today. I'm loving it. It's not too hot. Give me just one sec. We're gonna start in just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna turn this around to look at the screen for just another moment. Be right back. Who is all with us this afternoon? Hello. Let's see. A couple more minutes to let everyone get logged on and then we're gonna get started learning about Frida. Has anyone read about her before? Hi, Lena. Hello. What do you all already know about Frida Kahlo? Anything? Have you never heard of her before? Chime in in the comments if you'd like. Ah, so I am um, working from home now. Hi, Sabrine. Hello. So obviously, ta-da! You can see my backyard. If you hear any any noises, um, hi, hi, Henry. Hello, Helen. Hi. So any noises may be from um, cars or if you can hear birds, neighbor kids. <laughs> We're all making it work with this stay at home thing. How's everybody doing? Hmm. Okay, it is officially 1.30, so we're gonna get started. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Okay, so today we are learning all about the artist Frida Kahlo. This is Frida. She was born in 1907 and she passed away in 1954. She was pretty young when she passed away, um, but she was an extremely strong woman who overcame a lot of difficulties to become an amazing, extremely well-known artist and a champion of Mexican culture. So this is where Frida grew up. This is La Casa Azul or the Blue House. So it is outside of Mexico City and it was her childhood home. She lived there as an adult and it is now a museum as well. If you can see right here, it says Museo Frida Kahlo. So you can go there and um, see, hi Carrie, you can see her work um, and learn about her life as well. So just to give you some perspective, this is the world, 
Florida is right there. Hello. Boop. And then Mexico, Mexico City, where outside of where she grew up is right there. And here we go. So you all know that we live over here in Florida, right? We're right there below Jacksonville. And then way over here is the Frida Kahlo Museum. So that is about 2,000 miles away from us. So. Okay. This is Frida's family. Um, it was taken, this is a photo taken by her father. He was a German photographer that immigrated, which means he moved to Mexico to live, and he met Frida's mother there. Frida also had two older sisters and one younger sister. They're both, they're, they're all three of them in the photo here. And Frida is this one right over here. Do you all have any brothers and sisters? Can you imagine being one out of four girls? When Frida was only six years old, she was sick in bed for nine months with a sickness called polio. Can you imagine being in your bed, not being able to go anywhere for nine months? Oh my goodness, that must have been extremely difficult. Um, it did, uh, it, Frida did recover, but it affected her physically for the rest of her life. One of her legs um, was a little bit shorter than the other one as a result. Um, when she was a little bit older, when she was 18, she was in a very serious bus accident. Um, she fractured her spine, her pelvis, she broke a lot of bones and had a very long recovery. So again, Frida was stuck in bed for a very long time. Her mother had a special easel made for her. This is an example of one from later in her life. That's not when she was 18. She was older here. But just so you can picture what that looked like, her mom made or had an easel made for her so that she could draw and paint in bed. And that is when she actually took up painting. So she created her first um, self-portrait. So do you guys know what a self-portrait is? So very simply, a self-portrait is an image of the artist created by the artist. So it could be a painting, it could be a sculpture, a drawing, anything. Anything that shows your likeness by you. So lots of artists created self-portraits of themselves. Um, this one is a famous one by Frida called The Frame from 1938. And you can see it's extremely bright, colorful. There are lots of flowers. Oh, whoops, actually, let me make that a little bit brighter there. There we go. There's flowers, there's birds. You've got bright colors. She has flowers in her hair. It's beautiful. So that is one of Frida's self-portraits. So Frida is also very well known for her fashion. She adopted um, wearing colorful, traditional Mexican styles. She wanted to celebrate her Mexican culture. And one of the ways she did that was through what she wore. So she wore those beautiful big skirts, shorter tops with lots of color, embroidery, flowers, big patterns, as you can see. So not only did it celebrate her heritage, but it also helped to hide some of her disabilities that she didn't want people to notice when they were looking at her. So like we said with, um, because of because she had polio when she was a kid, one of her legs was shorter. She often had to wear braces or be in wheelchairs because of her, her bus accident as well. So those big skirts were a way to cover that up um, and also and, and put attention on her clothing and on her accessories and her choice um, of doing her hair in a traditional Mexican style as well. All of that put the focus on that and on her choices instead of, um, instead of the disabilities that she had. So this is a photograph of Frida and her husband. This is Diego Rivera. He was a Mexican muralist 
A mural is a very large scale painting, um, often done on sides of buildings. Um, we've done a mural class at my library before. Have you all ever worked on a mural before? It's really, it's really, really fun um, to do as a group project, to have a shared piece of art that everyone can work on together. Maybe you can do that with your family sometime soon. Work on a big piece of art together and then take some photos of it, share it with the library. We would love to see that. So that, that's what he did. He was a very famous muralist um, and he was even flown across the United States to paint. He was flown to New York, he was flown to California. A lot of people knew Diego Rivera and she, Frida, married him when she was very young. She was a lot younger than him. But obviously she became an amazing artist on her own as well. Because we, loads of people know Frida Kahlo, right? Okay. This is one of the things that Frida said that really struck me. She said, I paint my own reality. The only thing I know is that I paint because I need to. And I paint whatever passes through my head without any other consideration. Can you guys do that? Can you paint your own reality? It doesn't have to look exactly like what you see. It can be your own reality. Whatever passes through your head, get it down on paper or clay, whatever medium you want to use and create your own reality. Okay, this painting was by Frida in 1931. It's an oil painting and Frida is wearing traditional Mexican attire. You can see the big dress with the big skirt. She's got a shawl. She's got ribbons in her hair. And then her husband Diego is next to her. He's a lot bigger and a lot taller than Frida. He's wearing a big suit. He's got a palette and some brushes in his hand because she's showing that he is an artist. And there is a pigeon right up here holding a big banner that reads, it says a lot more than this, but it starts with, here you see us, me, Frieda Kahlo, with my dearest husband, Diego Rivera. So some people consider this um, their marriage portrait that Frida painted very soon after they got married. Okay, so what free medium did Frida use? We just said that one was an oil paint. That's primarily what she painted with, oil paints. Um, so those are a slow, very slow drying paint made of pigment, the color, um, and oil, often linseed oil. So because it takes a long time to dry, artists can paint with it and they can change as they go along. Um, it was used in it began to be used in Europe um, since all the way back in the 12th century. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's been around for a very, very long time. Uh, and that was her medium of choice. Okay, this is one of Frida's very first self-portraits. And you might notice that this one is a lot darker than the self-portraits that she became known for later on. She was a lot younger. There's only one hand that's shown in this self-portrait. And as you can see, like, it, it looks, her fingers look a little strange, right? That's not how you normally hold your hand. Uh, it shows that she was an artist. It's her artist hand because the thumb is a little bit disjointed from the rest of her hands um, from holding a palette. So that's a little note there that, that shows that she was an artist. And you can see even, whoop, Way back in 1926, she was painting herself um, with those joined eyebrows, which is something that she's kind of known for. This one is called the Self-Portrait Dedicate, Dedicated to Leon Trotsky. It's another oil painting done in 1937. And she painted this in honor of her friendship with Russian revolutionary leader Leon Trotsky. So it looks like she's on a stage. She's got those bright curtains and a bright background behind her. She's in that traditional Mexican attire still. The, I believe it's um, Tijuana attire. She's holding some flowers, her makeup, everything is very carefully done. She wants to look beautiful. Uh, and she is holding a letter addressed to Leon Trotsky as well in this one. So do you notice anything 
else about this painting. The colors, everything's bright. She's got the extremely full skirt, beautiful jewelry. Her hair is braided and put up. Hmm. What, do you, what else do you think about this painting? Okay, we're gonna move on to our next one. Okay, now, Frida was also inspired by nature and animals, by native plants found in Mexico. This is another oil painting. It was painted in 1938 and represents her bond with nature. She has a little monkey there. And if you notice, he's got his arm around, uh, wrapped around her. Like he's very close to her, almost like he's protecting her. And she's got those beautiful leaves in the background. So putting the leaves in the background like that, the plants, um, and having them so close to the foreground pushes her and her pet monkey to the very front of the painting. You can't see very far behind her. She's right there at the front in the focus. So remember that for our project that we're going to do in just a little while, okay? Another quote from Frida, I paint self-portraits because I am so often alone because I am the person I know best. Is that true for you all too? Are you the person that you know best? Think about that and think about you. When we work on our self-portraits in a little while, we're going to paint ourselves. We're going to paint what we know about ourselves. Okay, Frida looks really different in this painting, doesn't she? This was painted in 1940, and it shows her without any of the more feminine clothing or accessories that she normally wore. Her self-portrait with cropped hair, with cut hair. So if you look a little bit closer in that painting, you can see there's hair all over the place. She's got scissors that she's holding in her hands. She just cut off all of that hair. She's wearing a man's suit. It's oversized. She's wearing a buttoned up shirt underneath that. Even the way that she's sitting, she's not sitting in a way that, that we might consider more ladylike, right? She's got her knees apart. She's hunched forward just a little bit with her hands resting in her lap with those scissors. So this was painted after she was divorced from her husband, Diego Rivera. She wanted to become an artist outright and to be able to support herself artistically and financially on her own. So this is her way of portraying herself in a more traditionally masculine way. Okay, this is self-portrait with Bonito. We're going to look at, at the picture first. So Frida's expression, she's got a parrot on her shoulder. There's a butterfly. There's some other, uh, there's some insects behind her on those leaves as well. But Frida doesn't look like she did in some of her other portraits, does she? She's wearing all black. Even the accessories in her hair are black too. And she looks, she looks kind of sad. This portrait was painted in 1941. It was very soon after her father passed away. So it shows her sadness and her mourning. And Bonito, the parrot that's in that picture as well, had also recently passed away. So we have those beautiful leaves and insects in the background depicting life. And if you remember <laughs> something, something you all have probably seen, the movie Coco, we remember Frida from that movie, right? There's a lot of tradition of life and death together. So she's got all that life in the background. And then she's dressed, kind of showing her sadness about her father passing away. I've got that life and death back and forth there. Okay.
Frida had a lot of, um, of animals um, shown in her artwork. She loved animals. She loved nature. She had a lot of pets. She had a pet fawn in that photo, pet monkeys. She had cats. She had dogs, all sorts of animals. And there's a book that's called Frida and her Animalitos, which is why I put that on there. I'm going to show it to you a, a little bit later. Um, but she loved nature and animals and put them in her art as often as she could. Out of everything that we've looked at so far, she looks happiest in these photos with her animals, don't you think? Do you have any animals or any nature around you that you could put in your self-portrait too? What kind of pets do you all have? Or what kind of pet would you like to have? Okay, this was Frida as shown in Coco. As you can see, she's working on another self-portrait. <laughs> She's got her monkeys and her hands. She's got that eyebrow, the traditional clothing, flowers in her hair. At the end of the day, we can endure so much more than we think we can. Frida endured a lot in her life. She painted a lot to express that. I think painting or drawing, really any kind of creative um, activities that we can do right now when we're going through a lot um, can help us to move through this. Okay, let's make some art. We're going to create a self-portrait inspired by Frida. We're also going to make some beautiful tissue paper flowers. So first up, our self-portraits. So if you would like to do this along with me, you can, or uh, I can show you what I did and then you can do it afterwards because this video is gonna be available after for you to follow along with. We're going to be inspired by Frida and use some bright colors, plants, and am uh, animals. So I'm just gonna switch back real quick. Hello again. Hi. For anybody who didn't see me before we did the presentation, hello, I was inspired by Frida today. <laughs> So, eyebrows, flowers, yep. So I went ahead and started a little bit on my self-portrait. So I would like you all to take a piece of paper or a canvas or cardstock, whatever you all would like to use. And first I would like you to draw your frame. So I started on that and I just made a big box there we go. And I started to decorate the frame because I really liked that frame um, from the, the first photo that we had of Frida. So I think that one was actually called, let's go back and look real quick. It was called the frame, the one from 1938. It just, the color popped. So I'm going to add some bright color to make my frame pop too. And then I would like you to put <laughs> to put your face right in the middle of the frame. So you're going to be right there in the front, in the foreground of your drawing, okay? Or if you want to use paint, you can. Anything that you already have at home, okay? Even crayons, whatever you want to use. I'm not the best artist, obviously, but... <laughs> so I drew myself, I drew my hair, and I also drew one of my cats. So this... That's Biggs. I'm gonna color him in in a little while. I drew my hair. I, I'm surrounded by plants outside right now. So I'm gonna try to draw some of those behind me, okay? I even brought a mirror so that I could look at myself while I draw. So if you will have a mirror at home, especially one that you can prop up so you can look at yourself while you draw. That would be really helpful because sometimes you don't notice things about yourself until you look really close and notice those little details. Like I've got this little thing right here. So I put that in my picture too. I'm going to fill in my eyebrows so they look like Frida's today. I'm going to go like this. Cool. What else do you think? Should I put this up here too? 
put my headband with some big flowers. One, two, and three. I'm gonna color those in in a little while. Nice. The headband part. Cool. And maybe some of the trees behind me. I'm just gonna do this kind of abstract. What does abstract mean? It means it doesn't exactly look like real life. Not quite, a little different, but that's okay. You still get the feeling of it. So I'm gonna add some of these branches and then I'll go in and add some leaves later on. What do you think? And I'm just gonna do myself from like here up. We're just gonna see my top portion. Okay. My cat Bakes is gonna be right there up in front with me, just like Frida's monkey. Have my arms. What do you think? I think I need lots of green in there for all of those leaves. You can get as detailed as you would like or not be detailed at all. Okay, I'm gonna finish that later, but I wanna see your self-portraits when you're done, okay? And before we run out of time, I'm gonna show you how to make those tissue paper flowers, okay? Because those are really fun. Let me move this. I'm gonna back this up just a little bit there. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I save my tissue paper. When I buy something from a store that, you know, they pack it up all nicely with tissue paper or when people give me gifts, my mom laughs at me for this sometimes, but I save the tissue paper. You never know when you can use them. So I'm gonna take several sheets of tissue paper and lay them on top of each other, okay? I'm gonna start with one, two, three sheets of tissue paper and you can use any colors you like. The ones that are in my headband up here, we used lots of different colors for and layered them all together. So we're gonna take all of our tissue paper, layer it together, and then I'm going to start to fold it up. So I'm gonna fold it in about one to two inch increments. So I'm gonna, one second. I fold over one edge of the tissue paper and then fold it down all the way down the length of tissue paper. Very nice. And then I'm gonna fold it in the opposite direction. And we're gonna start what is called an accordion fold, okay? So we fold it one way and then we fold it the other way. And we're gonna fold it in the opposite direction and then you go back and forth and back and forth the whole way down. Okay, whoop, <laughs> there we are. Back and forth. And make sure we fold it down the whole length of tissue paper so we're not missing any, okay? Back and forth. And you can really do this with any size tissue paper. I'm gonna make a big flower, but you, if you cut it into smaller pieces of tissue paper, it's a little bit easier to fold and you can make a bunch of small flowers. You could make a beautiful bouquet, Put them in a vase to display. You could do a crown like this. You could even do one that goes all the way around your head. For this one, I just used a plastic headband and a bunch of pipe cleaners. But you can use floral tape. 
You can get that at the dollar store. You can use whatever you like. So I'm almost done folding this. This is gonna be a really big flower because I used some big pieces of tissue paper. So I have it all folded. See, boop, accordion fold. I'm gonna fold it in half now. And then I'm going to take a pipe cleaner, green one, and wrap it around, tie it together. I wanted to see what a big flower would look like. Okay. So we have it all together and now we're gonna start separating our petals. So if you have lots of petals, lots of layers of tissue paper, this might take some time. You have to be careful. You can use your fingertips and separate those petals. I had another one that I got ready for this too. Go back to this one. So one layer, two layers, three. See, they're so thin. There we go. And then once you get the layers separated. You do the very technical activity of fluffing. Fluff, fluff, fluff all of those petals out until they are as big and beautiful as you like. You can even use some scissors to round your edges before you open it up so they look more like flowers. So I've got one side fluffed up. I'm going to work on this side now, separating all these layers of tissue paper petals. Oop. There we go. One. Very nice. Oh, we've got a bunch of noise in the background. I wonder what that is. Do you guys hear the dog in the back too? Maybe it's one of Frida's dogs. Just kidding. Okay, we've got that petal separated. And now this one. And put them all together. Oh. Yay, look! Ta-da! A huge oversized flower. I think I'm gonna use this one to decorate my room. Oh, really? I love this. So you can make them as big or as small as you would like. I would take another, oh, I think my other pipe cleaner flew away. One minute. There we go. Can add another pipe cleaner or several onto the one that we used to wrap around the bottom. And you could hang it up in your room. That might look really pretty. Ta-da! Okay, that is our kids' art lab for today. Um, one last thing I wanted to show you were a couple of books that you can check out right away using your library card or your new e-card. Um, that's available on the front page of our website, sjcpls.org. <laughs> So one of the things that you can use with that card is a database called Hoopla. I'm going to turn this around and show you. Hoopla. Here we go. Hoopla has a ton of eBooks, audiobooks, movies, music, all of that on there. And when I searched for Frida Kahlo and focused just on kids books, these are the ones that came up. So that one that I was talking about earlier, Frida Kahlo and her animalitos. 
that's that one. And it even has a read along option. So you can read along with it. This is a, a video of it actually, but you can see on here, there's the book um, as an ebook, as an audio book, and then the read along down there. And then this one is my itty bitty bio, Frida Kahlo. So it has just a very simple biography of Frida Kahlo if you want to learn a little more about her. And again, all you need for that is your e-card or your library card. Log on, create an account, and you have access to thousands of e-books, e-audiobooks, videos, music, all available on there for you. You can get on your, uh, excuse me, get on your computer, on your phone, your tablet, using the app Hoopla. Thank you all so much. Do you all have any questions about our craft or anything that we talked about today? Thank you for joining me this afternoon and learning more about Frida. If you do any of these activities, please, please post them, tag the library. We would love to see you doing some of these projects at home. We can't wait to see you all again in the library, okay? See you soon. Bye.